Hey, what's up lads and ladies, Brad the Guitologist here. Uh, in this video, we're gonna look at some stuff that Timu sent me again. So they reached out to me uh, the other day and said, hey, our last video, uh, we liked what you did. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up here wherever. In that video, I scored some microphones for my drum set and also a little mixer to pre-mix all that stuff down. But if you guys want to check out Timu yourselves, definitely go and download the Timu app. You know, they've also got free shipping and free returns on all their stuff. Uh, like if something arrives late, even they give you like some money back. So I want to put the link to the app down in the description. It'll be right at the top of the description there if you want to check that out. Also, there's a search code. If, if you use the code, you'll get a $100 coupon bundle. Uh, and uh, But this time I thought... Okay, if they're gonna pay me to go shopping essentially again, then what I wanna do is build a guitar, and that's what we're gonna do in this video. So I got some parts that they sent me. Here is a body. This appears to be solid wood, and I'll tell you usually how you can figure this out without uh, having to scratch this paint off. You know, you can usually see the laminations on the body. This one does not appear to have any laminations like it is a plywood body. Um, I think this was like 60 bucks, I'm thinking this body was. This neck, okay, it was listed as, a, I think it was listed as flame maple. It doesn't really have any flame maple, but I did not expect it to be because the picture didn't appear to be flame maple. You know how sometimes, you know, you'll go on a Chinese site and, and it'll, the descriptions sometimes will leave, leave something to be desired, right? Because it's there's a language barrier. This is kind of mimicking a roasted maple look, and that's probably the word they wanted to use was like roasted maple, because it's it, there is no flame in this at all. It does have the side dot markers. The fret job actually looks really good on this. The frets look really nice. I don't think I'm gonna have to do any kind of work or polishing on these, just from what I can see. The only thing I see on it, there is a little bit of finish I don't know, you can kind of see some unevenness here in the finish. You don't really notice it until you're up close to it. That's the only kind of flaw I can really see on the neck, other than it being kind of dirty. The nut is plastic, I believe. So there is that. We could upgrade that with a bone if we wanted to. We'll see what we want to do. And this is actually kind of shocking that you can get this much stuff uh, these days for this kind of money. We've got a bridge, and that comes with... Uh, yeah, it's a synchronized tremolo, a Fender style, and it's got everything you need, the springs and the, the anchor and, and all that stuff is in there. We've got several different uh, knobs so we can look at what knobs are going to look like. i got a set of knobs that's mint and one that's kind of uh, off-white and then like a beige with uh, gold lettering and then i got like a beige with black lettering. Also went ahead and picked up a jack. We needed a neck plate. I've got most of this stuff already, but since they were, you know, letting me uh, buy it on the side, I went ahead and just bought so we can see what their stuff kind of looks like and everything. Got some strap locks because we were going to need something anyway, so I went, these strap locks were just dirt cheap. Got a roller in case we need it on the headstock, which we probably will at least need one. I probably should have ordered two, but I got just the one. Um, got a switch. And I bought a couple of different pit guards, and we're going to see which one we want to use. So I've got this one and a tortoise, which I always have thought looked really nice on a white body. So we've got that option. The only problem with this one is I don't think I have a set of pickups, really, that I could use without modifying the the pick guard. I do have pickups I could use, but they would the, the colors are, would kind of mismatch and they'd be funky looking. I, I don't know, but I'm kind of digging on this too. I, I, I'm thinking this is going to be probably the way I go because I already have a hum and a couple of single coils that I could stick in here. And that's what I wanted to do as well is, is use some of the stuff that I already had kind of laying around to make up the difference of what I didn't buy from them. I've got these uh, 916 pickups. Uh, these are boutique pickups made in California, uh, plan916.com, made in the USA. <laughs> so we've got the set of those, and that's hum hum, that's hum hum, 
Uh, so I really don't have anything that he sent me that was um, that would work for single, single, single or hum single, single. The other ones that he sent me are actually for a Telecaster build. And we'll probably throw this set on a Tele build here pretty soon. Now these single coils, this, this bridge pickup, I don't know what this is, but it's kind of a... DiMarzio clone by the look of it with that brass bottom so it's got some hefty magnets in there and also it looks like it's a bit overwound so and I have not checked it yet but that's a potential as well and it is white also I do have some pickup covers that I could throw on top of uh, whatever we end up using I've got this pickup this one is a vintage Gibson probably from the late 70s it's got the cover on it right now but that comes off and you can see here it is a vintage t-top that would probably be a kick-ass pickup one thing you don't want to do when you're doing putting together a hum single single guitar is if you use like regular single coil pickups uh just like something out of a standard fender or something like that which is what these are these are from a fender uh made in mexico standard i think I think that's what those are the covers that's actually naturally aged somebody uh these came off of something else these covers and i put them with these pickups because i'm thinking that's going to look pretty cool on this guitar uh but if you're using something like that those are going to be you know somewhat weak they're not going to be high output so you want to use something probably that matches like with a lower output which is what this uh minor pickup also does so right now it's on the humbucker if we use the hum single single configuration on this if we go with this pick guard and this setup which is what i'm i'm leaning toward actually right now and you can tell me down in the comments am i making a mistake going hum single single with this uh when i have the ability just to build a, tradi a more traditional strat let me know in the comments but i'm thinking that this you know that's only 7.7k these are meant to be uh, kind of a weaker output so that you get more of a natural sound with the guitar and it's not going to be colored by a lot of uh, high output. You're not going to be slamming the front end of your amplifier. It's going to be more of a natural sound of the amp. So I'm thinking this is probably going to be very comparable to what the output on this old Gibson T-Top uh, will end up being too. So that's an option. That's an option. I also have this pickup. This is a Seymour Duncan. That's a 9.84 K. I'm not sure what this, I think this might be a neck pickup though. The reason I know they're, they're, you can see that they're closer together, the pole pieces. I do also have these quick plugs from GFS pickups that a, that a guy sent me. He had a bunch of these that he sent. Looks like I've got four or five of these things. Um, these are uh, Alnico 2, I think, is what the magnets are on these, but they're a KPH 115, so these are actually uh, supposed to be neck pickups. I've got this single coil, which I'm not sure what this is. Somebody tell me what this is, because I've been racking my brain trying to remember what it came out of, and I just don't remember. There's no bottom magnets, so those are the magnets. I'd, I'd say they're probably Alnico, Alnico uh, pole pieces, and it seems like it's a... Uh, you know pretty heavily wound it's got good weight to it that's a that's a quality pickup i and it looks and it's potted for sure but i just don't know what the heck it came out of and i, I don't see really any distinctive markings or anything on it I've got a demarzio here but this one is a shot as you can see i don't know if you can see it or not but it's got a couple of uh loose strands of wire so that's going to need at least that winding is going to need to be rewound on this side so that's not an option. I've got another, that's also a Gibson uh, T-top pickup right there, but it's also, it's got the same problem as this one. It's got a bad winding on it. These pickup covers, these cream, look, I just, how long do you have to play a guitar in a, in a smoke filled room to get your pickup covers to look like that? To go from this, which the, you know, this is the part that was sunk underneath the pit guard, right? So it was sealed under the pit guard, basically. And then everything from here here up, it was exposed. And, you know, what kind of UV rays or or smoke or what, what, you know, what do you have to do to get a pickup cover to look like that, to change like that? But anyway, so yeah, that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do is, is go with these, these two pickups for the neck and middle positions. I don't think I'm going to use that Seymour Duncan, but it's probably going to be between these three. This no-name guy... 
Um, and also tell me what you think this pickup is, because I don't know, I don't know what this came out of either. Uh, vote below which one you would have used here, and we'll see where we end up going with this. But yeah, this is going to be fun build. Uh, stick around if you want to uh, see the whole thing. Also. I think uh, Sean over at Scar My Guitar, I contacted him. I was like, yeah, Timu reached out to me again because he was the one who referred me the, in the first place to those guys. He was like, they sent me uh, some guitar parts too, and he's in the process right now of also building a guitar. So uh, we're going to call this a strat build-off between uh, the guitologist and Scar My Guitar, and vote below who, who you think uh, did the better job. I forgot to mention that we did have a ground rule, two parts that we could exchange that are not Timu parts. You know, any of us that are out there we're not gonna have uh, just nothing on our shelves if we're building something from scratch usually you know we're gonna have a couple things that we mean to incorporate you know I've got grandpa's old pickup set or I got something you know uh, and in my case uh, I'm going with uh, some different pickups and some tuners that I already had so there are my two parts that uh, are not Timu everything else is pretty much gonna be Timu parts I had a couple different options of tuners that I could put on this. These are really good tuners, though. Um, I think these are off maybe a Mexican Strat or something like that. These are old school Fender, and they're similar to those that I'm going to use. But these are vintage 70s or early 80s, and they are probably off of a like a Tele Deluxe or something like that. So these could actually fetch good money on if I just put those. They're, those are probably, you know, $100 tuners anyway at least 150 maybe i've got another set of tuners here like six to a side these are old cluson style six to a side um i'm not sure on the vintage of these i believe these are reissue possibly maybe japanese reissue from the early 80s um but they are they're you know they're vin they do have some vintage to them and i thought about using those but i went ahead i think we're going to opt for these right here i always like the clean way that these look they do have this uh the two studs that we're gonna have to drill holes for in the back we may also put something on the headstock like maybe a guitologist logo or something up there on the headstock we might whip out the uh laser burner and do something like that since sean put scarred on his headstock we might uh match tit for tat on that little detail go watch uh sean's video as well and tell me which one you would rather rock okay so it's time to populate a pit guard and i've decided i am going to go with this white pit guard one of the first things i'm gonna have to do though because these covers are not meant originally for these pickups i do not want to damage the very very thin wires on this coil so i'm just gonna you know make a little arch for that to pass under right there and right there i might, may as well go ahead and mark it and just do a little tiny bit If I wanted to even, I could, could make this set a little more even. It's kind of cocked sideways a little bit because of this lead right here. Take a little bit out on the middle. I think I may do that. There we go. Now it's sitting, sitting straight. Okay, what do we got here? 6.7K. Yeah, that seems about right for a single coil. That's about what I would have expected. You know, output is not always directly proportional to the resistance measurement. That's a common fallacy. It has also to do with the strength of the magnets and so forth. There's kind of a balance there between those different factors. Those are pretty much exactly the same. I don't think it'll matter a single lick which one goes where. Probably wouldn't even notice it. They were probably three of the exact same pickup anyway, and that whatever those came out of. Like I said, I think they're Mexican uh, Strat. Uh, this has a ceramic magnet in it. It's not Alnico, it's ceramic, which there's nothing wrong with ceramic magnets. It's just, it's a, you know, it's a different sound if you're, it depends on what you're going for. And I chose this plan 916 minor pickup because it is low output uh, specifically. I want it to kind of be a little bit lower output so that it matches more, uh, a little more sonically with the pickups that I already have on hand here, these uh, Mexican ceramic pickups. I, I think that's going to be a pretty good mix of pickup right there. Now you'll notice that, that that 
cover right there is black, but we're going to be putting a cover on this. Uh, when I was looking for parts for this build, uh, I came across a couple of different covers in my stash. I got these two, and I already tried the spacing on the pole pieces, and it seems to be just fine. So I think that's going to match up pretty good. Um, also, the depth of the cover seems to be about right. But you can see the pole pieces right there match up pretty good. Probably don't even really necessarily have to solder this on if I didn't want to because it is kind of just press fit on there pretty good and let's go ahead and populate this pit guard and then we'll begin the process of uh, wiring it need some springs for the pickups and I think these two right here will work the only screws that I could find easily for these pickups were kind of kind of large though yeah that's that, I think that's all I've got really that's gonna work and if I want to I can come back later and I probably should go ahead and countersink those holes like these holes and sink those screws down a little bit. Looks like these are about 730 seconds. Let me actually go to a bigger bit. Yeah, see the difference between that screw, which is sunk down a little bit more, that one's, see how that one's sticking up? It's way better looking than that. Yeah, one thing I probably should just go ahead and do before I've got all these screws in this pit guard is um, take this plastic off. The last pit guard material that I messed with, I was surprised to find that it was, that it was uh, covered twice with uh, plastic uh, coating, and this is also twice coated. But yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good looking pick guard for no more than I paid for that. I'm not really sure about polarity on these. See, because the black is coming out of this side on this pickup and it's coming out of this side on this pickup. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure out the polarity and all that in a little bit. Let me find some, uh, I'm gonna rustle up some pots uh, and we'll get the switch installed. We may as well go ahead and install the switch. Uh, the switch does come with its hardware. It comes with a couple of different switch tips which we're going to change out that black one for this beige one and you get a couple of extra switch tips out of the deal which is kind of cool all right so there's that switch installed very nice feeling sm very smooth feeling switch it's got this large brass uh central axle on this mechanism it's got a really nice action also on the the metal here but it looks to me like this thing is pretty well put together that's a good switch especially for what i paid for it all right so let's grab some pots and then we're we'll pretty much be done with this thing okay so flash forward a little while and i've gotten this all wired up i did go ahead and sign the inside of it so future owners will know what idiot built this thing <laughs> here's what i have done we've got 500k pots here and here we've got a 250k pot for the for the one tone knob it's actually a single tone knob in this wiring setup using this as a blend pot so what this is doing is it's blending the humbucker pickup with the neck pickup so it went when you turn this you're blending in this pickup when we're on the bridge so we have a 500k pot here in the volume control. The 500k pots are usually best for, for your humbuckers, but 250k pot would be more ideal for these single coils. So what we've done here is we've added a couple of 470k from each of the connections of these two pickups. So when these pickups come into the switch, you've got one that's coming here to this point. We've got one resistor going from there to ground. We've got another one going from here to ground. So we're, when we have either of these pickups selected, it's actually automatically seeing a 470K resistance in parallel with whatever this is. So when it's all the way up, it will be uh, basically two 500K in parallel, which drops that by half. So when it's all the way up, it's gonna be 250K. 
So that's what we're doing right there with those resistors. Uh, used an old American-made Aerovox capacitor there. Um, used a CTS pot here. I think these are alphas, but they're um, you know they're nice full-size pots. I went ahead and pre-sprayed, pre-lubricated with a uh, lubricant on all of these pots so they're nice and smooth. Uh, any pot that you get really, usually you have to spray it, even from the factory. They'll sometimes have gunk and stuff in them or they won't have enough uh, lubricant in them from the factory. So, you know, spraying them is always a pretty good idea and they're working really, really nice and smooth. So I uh, also went ahead and added these knobs here, uh, which I think, I think look pretty good uh, on this guitar. I think they're gonna, they kind of match with this more or less and match with that switch tip more or less. Uh, we need an extra ground wire to go to the claw on the back of the guitar on the tremolo. Other than that, we're ready to test this out. So I'm going to use the two leads that we have coming off of the pick guard here. And we're going to run it to my little bench test amp. And we're just going to tap on the pickups to make sure we're getting um, what we expect to get. Okay, so we're good there. Our blend. See, there's our blend. Here's our quack position, our first little quack position. Uh, and actually our blend, our blend pot will will turn, will tune this in when we're in this quack position as well. So if we're in this quack position, this um, second position, it will, if you blend this in, you're gonna get all three pickups. And this is just middle. Now, a lot of people wire, um, the middle position where it's the outside pickups when you've got a regular Stratocaster. But I like keeping the middle pickup, uh, especially if we're gonna do the blend. Uh, so in our other quack position, our fourth position, we are seeing what we're supposed to see. And in this position, we've got just the neck. Uh, volume works, tone. Tone's doing what it's supposed to do there. What it's supposed to do there. So yeah, I think we're ready to go with this. Uh, one thing I, I did kind of notice is that the pot um, for the blend is is backwards from where I think I would like it to be. It's a little bit, uh, I don't know, counterintuitive. I, I would like for when you turn up this um, pot that you're blending in that pickup but instead turning it down is blending in the pickup. So I wanna change that. And all I have to do to change that is move uh, this wire from this side of the pot over to this side of the pot. Your cable management, um, you know, you, you really need to keep things straight. And when you're doing your two single coil pickups, it really helps to have some shrink tubing. Uh, I've, you can see here, I've got a piece here and a piece here. Instead of using tape, which can sometimes come off and just, you know, over time it just kind of sorts of sort of falls away and then everything frays out and, and you know it doesn't hold up very well. Shrink tubing works a lot better. And if I had a little bit of foresight, I would have um, I would have waited and put all of these together too and put a little piece of shrink tube across all of those right there. That's the only mistake I think I made as far as my um, wire management here, but uh, at the end of the day, I think it all looks pretty good. I don't know if you could see it or not, but I used a, a guitar string to wire the pots all together. Now, was that necessary? Probably not because we do have the shielding and all of these pots are also touching the shielding, but, um, and the switch too, for that matter. But, um, I like to go ahead anyway and uh, wire all the pots together just in case so you don't have any ground issues later on. Also, when you're wiring the uh, humbucker that has the Gibson style uh, shielding on the outside like that, the braided shielding, I always like to do like Gibson has always done and, and uh, solder the braid to the back of one of the pickups and then, uh, you know, of course, solder the main lead to where it needs to go. We're ready to install the pit guard in the body. Okay, that's all pretty good. A lot of these holes for the pit guard are not lining up at all. We're gonna have to do something about the pit guard holes, but that's uh, but it is gonna fit and everything. And you, can, I think you can see that that's gonna be a pretty decent looking guitar by the time we're done with it. 
Um, for as nice as this body is, oh, and by the way, that reminds me, it looks like uh, th this body is actually solid mahogany, at least according to the video that Sean made. So I'm assuming that these are probably probably all the same. It's possible that they're not, but it's, uh, it's possible that they are. But we're going to find out probably right now because I have to drill a hole in this and we'll see what the, uh, what the shavings look like. Right under the bridge pickup, we'll get it, and that, he's right, that's mahogany. Smell it. It looks and smells to me like mahogany. I bet my life on it. Okay, we've got to drill a couple holes for this claw. Okay, maybe you can see that now. Those shavings right there just have that reddish quality that I would expect from a mahogany body. Okay, there's the screws for the claw in there. Now we gotta get the ground wire run. that's on there if you get one of these bodies it comes pre-drilled for the uh, for the six point bridges like the one that we bought from Timu uh, so don't have to drill any extra holes yeah so there's our bridge on this side now we've got to get these springs on which is really easy to do uh, we'll show you a trick on the springs they started making these bridges a little bit different. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not, but the old school bridges, like old fender style bridges like this, you know, you put this end of the spring in and it just went straight down in here and sometimes it would have a tendency to pop out. Well, these actually are curved so that it goes in here and then it comes out over here on this side. So let me show you what this end. See it? You see it going in up here, and then the little bit of it is uh, poking out down here. See that? So it's actually nice and secure in there. So that's actually better than the way fenders um, used to make these. Uh, also, I'll show you a trick on installing these springs. You don't really have to. You don't have to undo your claw or anything like that usually to install these springs. Um, even if you got to stretch the. Uh, the spring kind of a long way. What I do is just get a little flathead screwdriver like this. See this? Put it. Put your screwdriver through the hole on the spring and then put it right in front of the claw that you want it to go onto and then lift up like that and it goes right on there. See, watch this. I'll show you again. So I'm going to take my spring, right? I'll put it through on the hook side. Take my little screwdriver, put it through the hole put the flat end up up here where I want it to go and boom there it is and actually I probably should have uh, put those here to the inside to keep them off of the body that's the one bad thing about the way that they have these hooked it makes it a little more difficult to get off there but I'll tell you what I'm gonna leave it like that and if I do hear any kind of scraping against the body over here on the side then I'll move it but other than that we'll leave it okay we have three screws really that that line up kind of uh, we have this one and this one or no excuse me it's not not that one it's this one this one and that one in the corner so these three kind of line up the rest of these I'm gonna have to drill out because not a single one of them not a single one other than those three lines up I'll go ahead and get the football jack installed. Um, that's not going to take much, and we'll come back to this when we are doing the drilling of these holes. I can't believe those none of the rest of those holes line up. Okay, I got the football jack wired up off camera. Forgot to hit record there uh, because unlike unlike Sean, I don't. My wife doesn't do my filming for me. Oh! It's so much harder when you have to do the filming and the building all yourself. Sympathy votes, people. Do what's right. You know what's right. So there's our football jack installed. Bridge is installed. We're rocking and rolling with this one. Now we'll just drill a few holes for these uh, 
for these other pit guard screws. Go ahead and do that. You'll notice I'm not using the uh, the power drill. That's because I'm over the top of the body. Accidents do happen, and I have slipped with a with a drill before. And I I just think that you know because the pilot holes were so small, and I would have to I had to press down a little bit to get them to get them going. This first time, I wasn't really comfortable with uh, using the power drill there. So yeah, there's the body pretty much completely done. That's a loaded body. The only thing we really need is these strap buttons. I'll go ahead and throw those on. Why not? Well, you know, I say strap buttons, but these are actually strap locks. There's the completed body with strap locks. So now all we've got to do really is get the neck together, get some strings on it, and she's ready to rock, I'd say. Did Sean's guitar have strap locks? I don't think it had any strap buttons. As a matter of fact, I think that kind of disqualifies Sean's guitar, if I'm honest. You know, if it doesn't have strap buttons, how are you going to stand up and play? You can't rock out with Sean's guitar. Ain't nobody got time for that. Clearly, this is the winner. It must be. Neck plate. We've got to drill some holes. Okay, I'm going to go grab the neck, and we will uh, attempt to get this neck on without screwing things up. Okay, trying to get the neck in this pocket. The neck is actually a little bit smaller than this pocket. Uh, there's going to be some space on one of the sides. We might split the difference or we might err one way or the other. Uh, but one thing I do know for sure is that there's a little bit of overhang right here on this um, pit guard material. So we're going to remove a little bit of that. <sighs> okay, that's a little more flush. Okay, I think I'm gonna do this on the floor because that, like I said, that neck doesn't fit too great. The floor is gonna be the easiest place to get to get steady with with uh, with my drill and everything. There we go and look at all that. Yeah, that's definitely mahogany, without a doubt. Go get it. Okay, that is one neck on one guitar. Yeah, you see all the dimples that I made there? It's looking to me like a one-eighth should work. A little bit wide. I probably could get away with something slightly smaller. Let me see if I can get away with something smaller first. Like I said, always err on the side of smaller. Uh, yeah, 764 is actually going to get it, isn't it? That'll get it. I'm going to tape it. Because the next thing I know, I'll be going through the front of the headstock. And then I'll have to seed victory by default in this uh, build off. I will not seed victory under any circumstances. Okay, so there are holes drilled. I think I want to drill these out a little bit. They're they're kind of they're they're sticking in there a little bit too tight, and I think it's basically just like paint or finish or whatever in there. by hand it's yeah it's, I think it's just got a little bit of garbage in there is all it is okay now that those are on there I'm gonna take those right back off of there and I'll show you why <laughs> okay so it's uh, possible that this next part ends in total disaster but I'm gonna try it anyway nothing ventured nothing gained 
I'm going to try to um, burn the logo on the head, my logo on the headstock. Doing this indoors is usually not advisable. Uh, it can set off fire alarms, and especially on wood, and especially when I'm having to go through layers of finish, which is, you know, it can let off some toxic fumes. So I'm going to actually turn on the extractor fan in my bathroom, which is right next to this room, so hopefully that'll drag some of it out of here. I want to start out putting the logo on a piece of cardboard as a test. Okay, so there is the there's the laser etch, and like I said, um, it looks good on this card. But in order to get that on the headstock, uh, I'm gonna have to up the contrast for sure. The fact that this is already finished is the problem because it has to get through the finish and then into the wood, and the finish has a tendency to burn. I think that size is actually not bad though. I think I have that position where I want it to go and it's about to get pretty smoky in here. I am probably, oh boy, that is bad right there. I gotta get out of this room. Alright, I've put a little fan down there and directing it at the extractor fan in the bathroom and maybe I can get rid of more of this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it again with another another round. Might as well. Like I said, I really can't take that off because if I do, I'll sort of lose the place of where it was. I guess I could mark around it, like use a magic marker and then pick it up, I'll be able to see then. But I'm pretty certain that that is not gonna be enough. I wish there was a way to preview it, like you know to be able to see it it would be nice because I can't really see it through that red I am gonna hit it with another round though for sure yeah let's do one more pass Looks like it might be a bit on the rough side, <laughs> but it's definitely incused into the wood. It, it definitely carved it out. So, yeah, let's take it up. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see, it's carved out, and it's not bad. I may come in here with a brush and uh, kind of lighten up the dark areas a little bit. Give it a bit of light toothbrushing here. Also just kind of clean up the edges a little bit, you know. Get it a little more defined. But see what I mean? Like if it, if it was lighter inside of there, I don't know, you really, it's hard to tell, but because of the suds, it makes it look, oh, okay. It's actually light, lightening up. There we go. That's actually gonna, it's gonna do exactly what I thought. So what we're seeing now is the lighter wood underneath the finish. Because it's maple. And that's gonna make it pop even more. There it is, there's the logo. Okay, I've got some gouache uh, paints, and I don't know, these might work, they might not work. Now I need to carefully remove the excess.
I'd say that worked out pretty well. It brought out a lot of the depth of the logos and it made it pop more. See there? And plus it matches the uh, body. So yeah, we'll let that dry. I think that's going to work out pretty good. Alright, no build is really complete without a serial number, so we're going to stamp a serial number into this. Say G. Let's say G zero. Zero zero. We'll make this one number five. Good enough. Now she's got a serial number. All right, we are at the stage of putting strings on now. Uh, and we're going to put on some Genuine Diodario uh, EXL 120s. These are the 9 to 42s. So we'll get these strings uh, on the guitar, come back, intonate it, and then uh, we'll be ready to check it out. Okay, so I found my first real issue here. Uh, one of the intonation adjustment screws, it, it stripped. It, I can turn it and turn it and it just keeps going round and round so it's not doing anything so I'll either let me see if I might I might just see if uh, I can replace the screw if not I might have to replace the whole saddle the saddle might be stripped okay so luckily I have a whole nother complete bridge just like this one so if I need to steal the saddle off that, I can. I guess I'm just gonna try an adjustment screw first and see if that was the problem or if it was the whole saddle. I was gonna say it might be the saddle itself that's stripped, but it is raising it up now, so. Well, there's another one stripped out. This one's stripped out too, look. I can turn and 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 it does nothing, so. We had two of these adjustment screws stripped. What really sucks is I'm having to steal from uh, one of my other bridges to make this one right. Yeah, I'm hoping this one works, but it's still loose in here. The tolerances are not great in this. One more thing this uh, absolutely must have is a string retainer. And I'm not exactly sure where I'm going to put it. Uh, I don't want it to get in the logo that I just so lovingly put on there, do I? <laughs> That's almost all the way through the headstock, that screw. Okay, that's that's too long. I'm not using that damn thing. Yeah, I'm going to use this much shorter screw. It, I don't think it has to go in that damn far to retain the string, so I'm going to gamble with it. All right, so one string retainer installed. Uh, probably needs two, if I'm honest, but uh, I could work with one. All right, guys, so this is one last look at the guitar before we give it a test, and I would say it came out looking pretty darn good. You know, we were allowed for this build-off two different uh, things that were not from Timu, and I chose tuners. Um, the tuner buttons I have installed here, you haven't seen those yet. These are from a company called Proper Tune. They sent me these a while back, and I haven't had really occasion to put them on anything. I tried them on a couple different things, and they were... Uh, they didn't fit some of the other tuners that I tried to put them on, but they fit these really nicely, and these are fantastic. I'll show you how they work a little bit later. There's our logo that came out looking pretty good, I'd say. It's all right. Tremolo set up to float, which that's how I like it. The only problem with this is the leading edge of the trim up here on the front. Uh, the pick guard is too invades on the space for this underneath so what happens is if you go too far forward see if see if how it falls down in there on that edge right there so i've got to come back and i've got to take the pit guard off and shave it uh other complaints include um you know the neck is such an amber color it is mimicking the trend of roasted maple neck um so it kind of has that look about it it's not real roasted maple obviously but uh you know because it's so dark because the tint is so dark if you ever were to scratch that neck or chip 
any of that finish off it would stand out like a sore thumb of course the other complaint about that bridge that's you know not not a whole lot we can do about that this is one of the screw-on type of uh trim arms and it only will sit i like to set my trim arm and have it not move and leave it where i put it and there's only a certain range where you can do that the rest of the time it just kind of flops so i'll need to put some thread uh tape on this and and make make the action a little bit nicer for me for my setup yeah dude just overall i'd say a really really cool guitar for the for the money and for the time invested these tuners are very ergonomic i've made a video about this before if you want to see that video why round tuners are extremely ergonomic because uh, instead of instead of grabbing a tuner like this and twisting your whole arm like this which is going to exacerbate any wrist problems that you have over time and believe me, I know all about wrist problems from my time working in IT and having a mouse all day on both arms now, both hands. Um, having the ability to just reach up here with and, and in one motion do this and not have to move your wrist at all and tune up and fine tune. This, These are the only way to go for tuners. You know, and if you don't think that they look good, I think you're crazy. Those look amazing. Okay, so after trying that um, <clears throat> Plan 916 pickup, it was just it was just too uh, microphonic from my taste. You know, I know that uh, sometimes microphonics can be a good thing. In this case, it was just a little bit too much for me. So I've replaced it with the uh, Gibson T-top, and I've also went ahead and done some shielding here. Uh, the T-top, like I said, measured at 8.1K, so I think that's still going to be right around probably the same output as this one but i did kind of bang it around i hooked it up to uh, my little bench amp here on the the bench and banged it uh, around and actually tested several different um, pickups again for microphonics this time and settled on the t-top i think it's going to be still somewhat microphonic you'd be really surprised but i went ahead and partially wax potted it so what i did was i stood the pick up up on its end and I dumped wax down inside of the uh, in between <clears throat> the uh, windings and uh, put some wax on the top and then put the cover on it and went ahead and soldered the cover on as well so I'm thinking that's going to limit the uh, amount of microphonics that we have plus I've went and gone ahead and shielded in here in the cavity so I'm hoping <clears throat> that will help keep some noise down too but yeah this is uh where we're going to leave and i'll put this reinstall this oh also i need to go ahead and shave down this part of the bridge right here too that was one of the other things i needed to do a shave right here because it's rubbing on the bridge so okay we're ready to give this thing a test i spent a considerable amount of time setting this up uh, i went over the intonation uh the the pickup height the pole piece height on the bridge pickups uh, one thing i did notice uh the Two single coil pickups, the pole pieces on those need to be ground down. Probably going to get a tool after some of those pole pieces. The, the G is kind of high, the D is a little bit high. I want to shave those down a little bit and even everything out. I, I notice that when I'm picking across the strings on these two, you know, I'm having to compensate, compensate a little bit with my picking techniques in order to get those to match. But man, everything else on this guitar is just is really coming together i'm i'm super happy with it i'm super proud of it you know i love the action of the trim even actually and these trims you know the six point uh trims are are not as bad as you think that they are once you get them set up properly uh, they are pretty as long as you don't go doing lady van halen stuff and you're doing you know just light kind of you know pink floydy kind of motions with the thing it's it's perfect it does exactly what it's supposed to do and it stays in tune there's not a problem um the little roller uh retainer up here is doing its job and it's keeping the strings in tune i mean i, I have no complaints about any of that yeah man i added some shielding i went back and uh put the gibson t-top in there which i think was the right decision the balance is good now between the the pickups and uh, you'll hear that here in just a sec Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, the coolest feature of this guitar probably is the blend knob that I incorporated into this, which blends the bridge pickup into the neck pickup. So right now I'm on the bridge position, and what I can do actually is I can dial in the amount of neck position pickup I want to add into that tone. So if you listen to this closely, right now it's all the way down, so it's just bridge. I can add in all neck with that also. Or any stage in between. I can back down a little bit. And there's some points in there where it really gets really nice and juicy and, and gets a little bit of grind to it that the neck pickup kind of adds. Or it's like a it's like a tick on the on the edge of the note. Now, if I, if I take that all the way out, though, it's a little more straightforward and rocky and kind of woody tone. Uh, but if you want that vintage sound, you can dial that amount in by adding that little bit of neck pickup in with that. If you add a lot, it gets a lot of body in there. But if you want just the attack, you can find that spot in there where it gets just the attack and not all of that body. verse of that tone if you click on the neck pickup it the blend knob also works on the neck pickup so when you're in this position it's you're blending in the bridge pickup with the blend knob right so uh, right now I've got the inverse of the because I've got these blended so I've got the inverse on this pickup now so if you listen to these two different tones <laughs> tell the difference there because I because the blend is kind of even but if I, I can set it in different spots and get different sounds to demo today is my uh it's i think this is uh 19 late 50s hammond that's can be converted into an uh, amplifier if you want to see a video of me doing that i'll put a link somewhere up here in one of these corners